Hey everyone, welcome back. This is Ian here bringing you this AI series with the new Boston. We're in video two of the series. So glad to have you here. Very excited to bring you this video. So let's get into it. In this particular video, we're going to build on what we did in the first video. We're going to use OpenAI's chat completion API to interact with it and get back some cool output, right? So we're going to have a conversation with OpenAI's GPT 3.5 turbo model and we're going to take control of exactly what that conversation is going to look like. Normally when we're out there on ChatGPT or similar generative AI tools, we just type in something. We might tell it like, hey, you know, pretend you're this and give me a response back. You know, write me a poem in the voice of Shakespeare or something like that. And that's great. But in this case, we're actually writing programs that allow our users to interact with chat but we have full control over the pretext of everything. So we can really build some cool things here. In this use case, we're going to augment what we did previously where we hard coded a question to the model. We said something like, tell me the NHL team for Philadelphia. And it came back with a response. Very straightforward answer. We had a low temperature setting in our request parameters. So it was giving us the same answer over and over again. That's great. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take in dynamic input from the user in the context of the program where it's executed, in this case, the terminal. And we're going to use that dynamic input to send it through with our chat completion request. And what that will do is make it to where the user now has the ability to ask the question. So instead of just hard coding it and having the same question over and over again, the user can start driving the conversation. We're going to go a step further though instead of just having the model act as a default helpful assistant we're going to tell the system role that hey you are a sweet old helpful grandma and what will happen there is that the response back from the api is going to be in the voice in the context of a sweet helpful old grandma so it's going to add a little bit of flair and uniqueness to those responses so let's take a look at it on the first two lines here, we simply have our import for the OS, the import for the OpenAI library, and then setting that OpenAI API key to the result of using OS with the getEMV method to get the actual value of our OpenAI API key environment variable. I know that's a lot. Hopefully you're familiar with setting up environment variables. If you're not, go ahead and look that up. It's really straightforward. Just make sure that you look it up for your operating system or your environment. You can do it with Python or you can do it with Windows. You can do it with Mac or Linux. There's a bunch of different ways and they're all very straightforward. So once you have that set up, now you're ready to interact with OpenAI's API. The next thing we wanna do is get some dynamic user input. And we can do that with Python's built-in input method. So the input method takes an argument that's a string and it'll print that out into the console and then the user will be prompted to respond to that. They're gonna type on their keyboard and when they press enter or return, the result of that is going to be stored in this variable. Here in this case, the variable is called user underscore text. So what we'll see as output in the console or in the terminal is what can granny help you with today so we're already setting the pretext here so that the user knows that they're communicating with granny they're no longer communicating with just a regular helpful assistant now we can use that user text that we gathered from our user and we can pass it into our chat completion api request down here on line nine you can see everything here looks pretty similar to what we did in the previous video right we're using openai's chat completion api we're creating a new chat completion object Behind the scenes, it knows which endpoints to send the request to and the headers and everything. We don't have to worry about any of that. All we have to do is make sure that we pass in values for the parameters that we want to use. So we pass them in as arguments, in this case, model, messages, temperature, and max tokens. We talked about those in the previous video, but let's go ahead and review exactly what they're doing here. So model is going to dictate which of the OpenAI models that we're going to use. LLM, large language model, in this case, GPT 3.5 Turbo. It's more affordable, it's still very powerful, it's great for just getting your feet wet and having some fun with this API without spending a bunch of money on tokens, okay? Messages. Messages is going to have different objects inside of it. It's a list, right, an array, and each object has a role. There's three roles. We have system, user, and we have assistant. The system is that very first object that just tells the model like, hey, this is how you need to act. This is the role you need to take on whenever you're responding to me in future responses as an assistant. And then anything from the user is going to be us, our input. 
anything from the assistant is going to be the responses that we get back. And we can append these objects into this list, as you'll see in the later video, so that we can continue building on this history. So every time we go back and communicate with the API, it knows exactly the context of the conversation. For now, we're just setting the pretext. We're saying, hey, system, you are a sweet, old, helpful grandma. So the role of system, the content is you are a sweet, old, helpful grandma. Easy enough. That's our first object in the messages list. The next one is role of user. Again, this is the input from us, the user, or the users that are using our program. The content is going to be set to some type of string. Now, previously we hard coded this. Now we're going to set it to the variable user text, which was executed right when our program was run initially. We'll see that in a moment. And it asks the user for some input. What can Granny help you with today? So then the user enters something in there and we use that inside of our request here so that the chat completions API can say, okay, I'm a sweet old helpful grandma. Here's your question. Let me build a response for you and then send it back. When we get it back, we store it in this response variable and then we can take a look at it. Of course, we have our temperature. That's gonna determine how deterministic, how variable, how creative the responses are. In this case, we're pretty close to zero at 0 0.5. The scale is zero to two. The closer you are to zero, the less random it'll be. The closer you are to two, uh, the more creative, but potentially more random and, and error prone it could be. Max tokens. This is the number of tokens that we will allow the response to go up to in the prompt response. This isn't including the tokens that are being used for the input. This is just for the prompt response. So the total tokens will be the max tokens, whatever gets used from those, and whatever tokens are inherently uh, included in our inputs. So we'll see more of that in a second. So you see, you'll see exactly what I'm talking about. Okay, so that's it. Whenever we pass in all of these arguments and we send them to the chat completion API, it does its thing and then it sends us back a response. So we're going to print that response. It's just going to be an object with some key value pairs. We're going to print a empty line just for formatting purposes. And then we're going to actually dive down into the response object. We're going to go look at what's called choices. You can set a choices argument to give you multiple choices to look at. In this case, we omitted it, so we're only gonna have one. And therefore, we're going to access that one choice at the zero as index inside of that choices list. Once inside of there, we're gonna have another object to look at. It's gonna have a message field or attribute. And when we look inside there, it'll have a content attribute. And when we look inside of that, ultimately, we're gonna get back our string of text. And that's what we're gonna to print to the console here. So let's open up our code editor. And I should mention before we run this code that if you're following along and you've got the repository with all the solution code for this entire series uh, from the description, of course, on your computer, there's going to be a couple folders in that main repository. The one that we are in currently is the OpenAI underscore examples. This is the second video in the series. So we are inside of 02 user input. All the code that we just looked at is inside main.py. Of course, you're going to want to make sure that if you're doing this locally, you have a virtual environment set up, you have all your dependencies installed, and you have your open AI API key set as an environment variable. So with all of that ready to go, then you can run Python main.py from inside of the O2 or 02 user input folder. So we're going to run it. Of course, it's going to hit that line where it wants the input. So the prompt for us is what can granny help with help you with today? And we're going to say, we're going to keep it simple at first, okay? Because this is super powerful. You can ask open-ended questions and you can get massive responses. But just remember, large responses means lots of tokens. Lots of tokens means lots of money. Okay, so let's do something simple like, what is the capital of New York? Now, if we had asked this question with our previous implementation from the first video, it would just be very straightforward, very simple. It would just say the capital of New York is Albany. In this case, Remember, this is a helpful granny, so our responses can be a little more creative. It says, oh, my dear, the capital of New York is Albany. Okay, very similar to what it would have been, but now it's calling us my dear. And then it goes on to say, it's a lovely city located along the Hudson River. Is there anything else you'd like to know? So again, helpful old grandma, she's following up with us. She's saying, is there anything else you'd like to know? She's calling us dear. You know, I feel like I'm, I'm at grandma's house right now and she's helping me out. Now let's look at the response object here. It's going to be very similar to what we saw before in our initial implementation from the first video. It has a unique ID for this chat completion object. It says that the object type is that of chat completion. The created property here is going to be a Unix timestamp. 
the model is the model that we use, GPT 3.5 Turbo with the version number. The choices, because we omitted choices as a argument in our initial request, it's only gonna give us one. So we have one choice object like we talked about before. The index is zero. The message is going to have the role that it is. If it's coming back to us, it's the assistant, right? And then it has the content. So the content is what we're really uh, concerned with, is what we wanna look at. So we'll see uh, here in a second how we access that. Here it is, the string, that's what we printed, right? And then the finish reason is stop. That's good, we want a finish reason of stop. If we modify our tokens so that we're creating kind of a threshold that you can only go up to so many tokens in your response, that's fine, but just know that if the question is open-ended and so the response is a longer response and if it meets its token length and max tokens, then it's actually just gonna cut off the response and the finish reason is not gonna be stop, it's gonna be length. So we can look at that more in a second before we wrap up the video. The usage of course is useful because it shows us what the total number of prompt tokens were, prompt tokens being the response, the completion tokens being the result back to us, the chat completion, and then the total tokens of course is the combination of those two. So 61 is super low, that's great. We asked a really simple question, we got a pretty simple answer, didn't use a lot of tokens. Now we can ask a not so simple open-ended question and it can use all 1,024 of the tokens that we set in our max tokens. That may not be what we want. So we might tune it down to like a hundred, but then if we do something where we run the program, it says, what can granny help you with today? And we say, tell me a story, granny. And we run it. What's going to happen most likely is it's not going to be able to tell us a full story in a hundred tokens. For the completion and so it'll cut it off and so we'll see what that looks like in the response object okay so completion tokens this is the content of the assistant responding to us that's our completion is a hundred tokens okay total tokens of course is the combination of the prompt tokens plus the completion tokens so when you do max underscore tokens you're saying your completion can only use this many tokens in this case 100 and then it says okay well in addition to the completion your prompt, your input, use this many tokens as well. So here's the total for that. Okay, great. Now, because in our code, down at the very bottom, we traverse down into the object, choice is zero message content on the response, and we print that, we get that printed out really nicely here, right? So we can see it here, but it's included in this larger object with all this you know, distraction. So if we go down here and we look at that output, we can see it starts telling us a story which is what we asked it to do. And it's doing it as if it's a helpful old grandma. However, because we limited the max tokens to 100, it got to 100 tokens and it stopped. You see here, curiosity peaked. That's the beginning of the sentence, but it's not a full thought. We don't have a period, we don't have an end of the sentence. So there's going to be some, let's just call it an artifact of limiting your tokens. And so when you're building your applications, you have to take that into account. If I'm limiting my tokens, could the response not be fully finished? How do I determine that? Well, that's where the finish reason comes into play. If it says finish reason is stop, that means it came to a natural stopping point. That's great. If it's length, then you probably wanna do a check for that and you wanna follow up with some type of response or output or message or something, logging, whatever you choose to do, to have the best user experience possible based on the limitations of your program. Just something to think about. Let's go ahead and do a quick overview of everything we just talked about, because even though it's only a few lines of code, we just did something really powerful. And now you have the ability to go in here, augment it, and really have some fun kind of moving things around and making it do exactly what you want it to do. So again, boilerplate code at the top, get that environment variable, set it on your open AI as the API key. That's all good to go. Now get that user input, assign it to a variable, make a call to the API, assign the result to a variable, and then print out the entire result, print an empty space for formatting purposes, and then print the actual content. So traverse down into that object until you get to the content attribute and print its output. Now, more specifically inside of the OpenAI chat completion API call, just remember that our system is no longer a helpful assistant. We said, you are a sweet old helpful grandma. Have fun with this, mess around with it, make it do something different, right? See what kind of output you can get based on whatever you put inside the content here. And then again, you can change your input here according to whatever you set the context of the content string for your system role. 
you're going to end up passing that text down in here. It's going to make things dynamic. And in future videos, we're going to show you how to keep that conversation going so that the user can keep going back and forth with the model and actually having a full conversation with a tracked history and the model understands the context of the continued conversation. That's it for now. Really enjoying teaching this to you all. Thank you so much. Please give me any comments or feedback questions in the comments below, and we will see you all in the next video. Thanks a lot.